So before we start, uh, I want us to kick things off by appreciating how a few everyday items often find new unexpected purposes. So let's start with toothpicks. Originally made to clean teeth, that's correct, but also a clever tool for ejecting SIM cards out of our smartphones. And rice is a staple food, right? But also our go-to for rescuing wet electronics. And what about these Danish butter cookie tins? Sure, they're great for cookies, but also a handy container for storing sewing supplies. So these everyday hacks are cool, right? But apart from being cool, they're also an example that show you how everyday items can be adapted to solve different problems effectively. And why am I telling you this? Because similarly at Wix, we've taken Apache Airflow, a powerful tool you all know, mainly used for scheduling data pipelines, and adapted it to create a seamless machine learning platform. So in this session today, I'm going to speak about how we use Airflow as a backend tool rather than just a scheduling tool. And hopefully, by the end of the session, you'll see how thinking outside the box can unlock new potential with tools you already use. And uh, maybe it will inspire you to explore new possibilities with Airflow in your own projects. So I, again, I'm Elad. I've been a data and MLOps engineer at Wix for the past four years. And before that, I led a group of data analysts at Natural Intelligence. And as I told you, we're going to speak how we are leveraging Airflow with Wix beyond its traditional usage. But before we're going to do this, I'm going to say a few words about Wix, the company I work for, and about its data science department. Also, I'll give you a short overview of our machine learning platform, aka ML platform, which is an in-house tool we built for our data scientists. And last but not least, of course, we'll see how Airflow empowers this ML platform. So let's talk about Wix. Wix is a platform for people to build websites. You don't need to be a web developer or a web designer. You don't need to know what HTML, Java, or coding is, but you need a website to establish your online presence. And Wix provides it. We are one of the biggest players in the website builder's domain with 10% out of the entire internet. And we also use Airflow massively with more than 5,500 daily DAG runs containing 12K Airflow tasks. And we're also the sponsors of the Premier League champions, uh, for those of you who like football. So apparently we like to win both in tech and in football. And now let's say a few words about the data science department at Wix. So every day, more than 200 machine learning models run at Wix. More than 200 models run at Wix every day performing tasks like fraud detection, classification, text embeddings, etc. And in order to enable this, we built our very own machine learning platform, which will be called from this point on ML platform. And this platform is basically a one-stop shop platform for people, for data scientists, to handle the entire end-to-end -end machine learning workflow. So using it, they can train, deploy, build, invoke, do whatever they want that is ML related using this platform. So this is the vision of the ML platform basically. Let the data scientists focus on the models and let the engineers handle the engineering. Uh, so the data scientists, they're the main users of the platform and they work exclusively with it. So it's always good to show a great looking slide but uh, honestly, we do have a great UI, and we even added a, an AI chatbot lately, down there in the right bottom. And uh, here I did it, I said AI, uh, everyone should do it at least once in his presentation. So uh, I think uh, we're good to go. So what can our users do with this ML platform? Let's take John, our made-up data scientist, for example. So John has built an amazing machine learning model, and now he wants to put it in production. The first step for John will be to train the model, meaning feeding it with lots of data so the model will learn how to make predictions based on this data. Next, John wants to generate a data set that will be the input for the model to make predictions on. So after training and uh, preparing, John wants to deploy the model, meaning making it available on production environments. And finally, John wants to run the model so you will be able to make accurate predictions with it. All of these steps are steps that every data scientist go through, and all of them are available in the ML platform. So the entire end-to-end -end ML workflow is now in a single platform. Okay, so 
So far, we spoke about a few important building blocks in our story. We talked about Wix and its data science department. We talked about the ML platform. And now let's move on to the most important piece, which is Airflow. And let's see how it all fits together. If you need uh, to leave or need the TLDR version of this session, this is the slide for you. We're now going to speak about a few key applications where we use Airflow to boost the ML platform. And the first one is going to be how we trigger DAGs from the ML platform. But before we're doing it, I want us to go back to our opening idea of reusing tools in a different way and show you how we've done it with Airflow. So the main thing to understand is that we're not using Airflow as a scheduling tool. We use it as an on-demand tool for triggering DAGs. So the schedule interval parameter of all of our DAGs is set to none because none of them is scheduled and all of them are triggered on demand. Let's go back to John. Whatever job John wants to run, be it uh, training a model, deploying it, uh, running predictions, whatever job he wants to run, he can configure and trigger it with the ML platform. But behind the scenes, what runs these jobs are Airflow DAGs. So each one of these jobs here as a corresponding Airflow DAG that actually runs it. And the way to trigger these DAGs goes through the ML platform. So John is triggering the DAGs from the user-friendly ML platform, that's correct. But behind the scenes, the job runs on Airflow. So this is the main thing to understand. We trigger an ML platform, but we run on Airflow. And this basic diagram describes the general flow of all of our pipelines, whatever job it is the user trigger a job from the ML platform, then this job is converted into an Airflow DAG using a request and of in the, using the Airflow API. This is a simplified example of how this request looks like. So the first component, you can see the Airflow server endpoint, and I want you to pay attention to the ending of this endpoint, which contains the DAG ID that we want to trigger. The second component, is a configuration for this DAG. This configuration changes depending on the job that we want to trigger. So if John wants to trigger a model training job, then probably he will need to send the model ID. But if John wants to run a model prediction job, so probably we'll need to send the input data for the model to make the predictions on. Okay, so the user triggers a job from the ML platform. This job was converted into an Airflow DAG, and now this DAG is running. When this DAG is running, it constantly sends updates to the ML platform, so the DAG progress will be visible to the user in the ML platform, so we can monitor it easily. And actually this part, this last part of monitoring the DAG is, is pretty cool, so I want to elaborate a bit about it. And how does it work? So each task in our DAGs uses on success and on failure callbacks. In these callbacks, each task sends the status of the task along with some metadata to a dedicated Kafka topic. On the other end, there is another Kafka service that constantly consumes these topic, these uh, reports, sorry, and show them in the ML platform UI. And this is how it looks like. This is an example for a job. And there on the right side in the blue frame, you can see the Airflow progress item, which lists all the tasks in this DAG so the user can monitor in real time very easily the progress of the DAG. And if there are any error messages, you can see it here as well. And in addition, we have a link to the Airflow DAG, so it's all very well connected, the ML platform and the Airflow. Okay, so far we saw how our users trigger DAGs, trigger Airflow DAGs, without actually using Airflow. And now let's move on to the next scenario. Quick question before this. Who here has ever triggered the DAG and then wanted to cancel it, to fail it? Yeah, as I thought so, all of us at some point, and it's not a surprise because if you trigger the DAG and you understood you made a mistake, there's no point in letting it finish while spending resources, right? So, and I want to remind you also that our users, they don't use Airflow directly, so they can't cancel the job from the Airflow UI like you would imagine. Uh, so it only makes sense that if we allow them to trigger jobs from the ML platform, we will allow them also to cancel these jobs from the ML platform if they want to. So this is how it looks from the ML platform perspective. You go into the job screen, one of them, it chooses a job, you click cancel, pretty intuitive. 
Now let's move on to the Airflow side. So when you click this cancel, you are triggering the cancellation DAG. The cancellation DAG is a DAG that knows how to cancel other DAGs. And this DAG accepts two parameters, DAG ID and DAG run ID of the required DAG we want to cancel. The first task will be to fetch the DAG run of the specific DAG we want to cancel, and we are doing it by the DAG ID and the DAG run ID. Then we need to find the unfinished tasks in this DAG and to set the status to failed. We need to find the tasks that haven't finished yet in this DAG run, and we need to set the status of these tasks to failed. Let's see some code so it will be clearer. So using three simple Python operators and a few Airflow Python libraries, we're managing to do so. And when I say Airflow Python libraries, I'm not talking about some fancy stuff I discovered. It's just the basic stuff you get when you pip install Airflow, so you all have it. You can just use it. And what we're doing is basically finding the DAG run using the DAG run class and the, it's very useful find method. We're fetching the DAG run. Once we have it, we need to find the tasks in it that haven't finished yet. We're doing it using the task instance and state classes. And when we have these tasks, all we need to do is to go over them one by one and to set their status to failed. So this is how it looks all together. Find a specific DAG run to cancel. Then we want to find the unfinished task in this DAG run. And finally, set the task status to failed. So again, using three simple Python operators and a few Airflow libraries, we managed to cancel a DAG programmatically without using the Airflow UI at all. Okay, so far we saw how we are using Airflow to trigger DAGs and to cancel them if we want to as part of our ML platform backend. Now I want us to speak about another key aspect, which is DAGs monitoring. Well, monitoring DAGs is one of these things that often gets ignored, but honestly, it's uh, super important for keeping our platform reliable and performant. And specifically, we had a use case where one of our key DAGs was paused unintentionally, and let me tell you, it caused us a big mess. So there's no better time to present you with the DAG status monitoring DAG, a DAG that knows how to, mo to uh, monitor the status of other DAGs, to tell if they're active or inactive as needed. So let's go over these DAGs uh, tasks. The first task uh, uses the Airflow API again to query the Airflow database and see if there are any relevant DAGs that are paused unintentionally. Again, a very simplified example. I just want you to pay attention that this time in the Airflow server endpoint, the ending is a bit different. We're not using the DAG ID because we're not triggering, triggering any DAG. We just want to get the list of the DAGs to see which one of them is paused. If we have any paused DAG that is paused unintentionally, we're sending a Slack alert to the owner of the DAG, notifying him about the issue. So this is an example for some useful Slack alerts we send to our users, notifying them that their DAGs are paused unintentionally so they can do something about it. And again, it's not complicated. Simple is beautiful. And pay attention, in a very simple DAG, we managed to send, to do this monitoring, basically, and to send to the end user a message that sent him, uh, that says him that his DAG is paused unintentionally. Now, I don't have uh, enough time to go into each one of our uh, monitoring use cases, but I do want to give you some uh, titles, some use cases of uh, monitoring DAGs, maybe to increase your motivation in monitoring your own DAGs. So just a few. We can monitor the success rate of our tasks to see if there are any recurring issues. We can definitely monitor the task duration to identify bottlenecks. We are monitoring sensors, task sensors, to see, to optimize the timing, to see, to align with external data updates. And we can track the DAG run counts, successes, and failure to build very useful dashboards, just like the dashboard that you saw in the beginning of the presentation, the ML platform dashboard. We can use this DAG run counts, successes, and failures to build this kind of dashboards. So all very useful uh, scenarios to monitor DAGs. And time to sum up. So we saw how we are maximizing Airflow with Wix uh, to empower the ML platform and to run machine learning models at scale. 
our users, they use Airflow a lot, but they're doing it without touching Airflow at all. And uh, we also spoke about a few key applications where we use Airflow to boost our ML platform, so we trigger DAGs using the Airflow API. We're canceling these DAGs if we want to, using some Airflow Python libraries, and we're monitoring the DAGs, again, using the Airflow API. By utilizing and understanding these concepts, we can, we can definitely unlock the full potential of Airflow. Well, I'm very proud of the work we're doing at Wix with ML Platform and Airflow. So proud that I often joke with my colleagues and tell them that if we do everything too right, our jobs might not be necessary anymore. Well, of course, I'm just kidding, but I do want to seize this opportunity to thank uh, the Airflow community for keep coming with amazing Airflow features. And I want to thank you for listening and for being here today. Thank you. <laughs>